Good afternoon. How is everyone? Good, thank you. Good. Um, I want to first start with um, a waiver the department filed June 30th. Um, it says the department is requesting a waiver to the lapsing and encumbrance provisions of Act 146 of 1980 Management Directive 310.3 for approximately $12.4 million from this fiscal year. Uh, 2014-15 funds in the GGO appropriation. This includes a remaining balance of approximately $10.2 million and commitments of approximately $2.2 million. So out of that 12.2, 2.2 is committed, available is 10.2. Now that was to pay for the administrative costs related to the new tax package. Obviously there was no tax package implemented yet this fiscal year. Um, is that is that $10.2 million still available for this fiscal year? I believe a good part of it is um, we have had some additional expenses that had to be met out of that, both pertaining to prior fiscal years and some, um, some minor expenses out of this fiscal year postage and um, some expenses for auditor travel that have been met out of that, but some of it is also still available. So some of that was used to was some of that used to fund the, administ or the administrative functions during the impasse. So when you got your allocation, you received credit for that amount and there should be a reconciliation. How much of that was reconciled that is now available because the budget passed and money flowed into to your GGL? I am not sure that that money, that any expenditures have been um, adjusted by the budget office for the current year? No, not yet. So there's been no reconciliation to date? Um, the intention is that that will be reconciled. It has not to date. Okay. So potentially that 10.2 could still be available for this fiscal year. Any not the entire thing. Some of that has been spent. Okay. On, on administrative costs? No, on expenses from the prior fiscal prior year. Prior fiscal year, okay. And if you could provide us just an update of that, that would be great. Okay. Um, the governor recommends a supplemental appropriation for this fiscal year, 15-16, of 9.2 million as identified on page E39-4 of the executive budget. On February 11th, you sent information to all the appropriations committee chairs with information documenting the governor's recommendation. On page two of that documentation, it states that the current appropriation will be exhausted in June 2016. To further complicate, complicate this issue, on the second page of your written testimony provided today to the committee states, quote, the governor's budget reinstates $4.9 million in a supplemental appropriation to the current year, end quote. If this is true that the current Act 10A appropriation of $126.4 million will provide funding through June 2016. Why is there a supplemental appropriation needed for 1516? Well, the 9.165 million that you mentioned is actually composed of two pieces. And the 4.9 million is one of those pieces. And is it is the combination of the 4.9 million and the uh, 126.4 that you mentioned that will take us until June 30th. The other piece of that 9.165 million that you mentioned is 4.3 million, and that is the amount that is proposed for the current fiscal year to pay for the administration of the tax code changes. And what tax code changes are there? The tax code that changes that are related to the administration of the governor's uh, tax proposal for the current fiscal year. Okay. Many budgets need clarification, sorry. <laughs> um, the governor recommends funding $148.6 million for the department in 1617. That's an increase of $13 million or 9.6% above the recommended 2015-16 funding level. According to the information provided to the committee, um, the 1617 budget assumes an increase of 44 authorized positions. In the governor's budget book, a new initiative as identified to, quote, annualize and continue to implement tax changes. 
You have provided detailed information to the committee on the go time initiative in response to the chairman's request for efficiency and cost saving measures. In reading that document, I do not see any reference to the need for additional employees. In fact, the document contains the following statements, quote, staff can be reallocated, end quote, end quote, using existing revenue IT staff, end quote. Quote, no additional personnel will be hired, quote, and quote, staff will be reassigned, end quote. My question is, if the go time initiative, as you have provided details for requires no additional staff, why does the budget assume an increase of 44 positions and additional funding of $13 million for the department for next fiscal year? The, the 44 uh, positions are related to the collection of the taxes that are part of the governor's tax proposal including the severance tax, the additional um, taxes on other tobacco products, and cigarette tax, sales tax, personal income tax. That's what those, that's what that uh, complement is for, and it's a continuation of the um, 4.3 million that we just talked about that is part of the 1516 budget. So so the bringing that 4.3 million into a full fiscal year and with with uh, the cost to carry calculation on that makes that 6.3 million. So our our base cost to carry budget for 1617 with no additional staffing would be 142340. You add to that 6.3 for the um, continuation of the administration of the additional tax items, and that's how you get the 148.6. Okay. Um, in your testimony, you state the department relies an additional $2.3 million from new modeling that will identify underreported sales tax collections, and an additional 676,000 will be realized for more efficient lien filing for state tax liens. Are those savings reflected in the governor's revenue forecast for 1617? Are they built into your budget? Yes, those will be for 1617. All right, and they are built into your budget and will be annualized? Yeah. Yes. Um, with any other savings you have found from any other cost savings initiatives, are they buried within your budget as annualized to be carried out throughout your budget? They are, yes. They've been, they've been incorporated into our ongoing policies. Now, they, I will say they're in our cost to carry budget, assuming that we are operating off of a 15-16 appropriation that includes our cost to carry appropriation. We are not at that point right now with the budget that was enacted at the end of December. So I'm talking about that in relation to, go to the governor's proposal, which includes uh, increasing our appropriation by the um, cost to carry amount. Okay. So going back to 1415, um, you pulled $10.2 million forward. Some of that has been spent, some of it hasn't been reconciled, so we really don't know how much $10.2 million is there. Um, we have mixed communication from your department saying you either do or do not need new staff, more staff. We have cost savings that's been identified, but not in a budget book, and might I add there's been, and throughout the entire budget book, there's no cost savings embedded within any department. Um, for, for and I think I think the administration in general is very good at looking at effective ways uh, to reduce costs in government. It's not reflected in that budget book. I've been through the entire budget book, page through page. Um, I think those subtractions need to be in there so we clearly can identify where their savings and where they're being occurred moving forward. And you know, and I'll go back to that 1415. If you're starting at a surplus of whatever that allocation is, that's going to carry through your entire budget reducing the need for additional monies moving forward. And uh, quick question Can on- Can I just uh, respond to one go thing ahead. that you were saying about the go time initiatives? Mm -hmm. Because of the nature of what the Department of Revenue does, our go time initiatives, rather than cutting the cost of operating the department, increase the amount of revenue that is brought into the department. So the place that you would be looking for that would be in the revenue estimate. Uh, as you actually previously indicated, um, 
with one of your questions. So, so that's where our go time savings are being reflected is in increased revenues. So that would be listed under non-tax revenue? Or revenue increase, is it, is it specific in there through the Zay Go Time initiative? It, no, it's it not it's shown just, separately. Just shown as an increase of whatever amount under yes. that section? Yes. Okay. That's why it would be missed. So, um, Secretary McNulty, in 2014, in a policy brief, uh, you pointed out that the validity of severance tax revenues and the state's reliant on them will, quote, find it more difficult to maintain revenue yields when energy prices fall, end quote. Given this current state of prices nationally and the fact PA's average price is about 44% less than markets across the country, how specifically would adding a severance tax help strengthen Pennsylvania's tax structure? It would strengthen our tax structure by broadening it and providing additional revenues and bringing uh, Pennsylvania into line with other states that have severance taxes. It will um, allow the, tax, the taxation on the industry to be similar to levels in other states. Yes, there is some volatility involved in the severance tax, but that's counterbalanced by some of the very steady taxes that we have, for instance, the cigarette tax. Um, we have some taxes that, are, that don't change much from year to year. So isn't overall, this is the reason why you have a variety of different taxes. But isn't it true that cigarette taxes decrease? They are declining the slightly, so yes. Once you have it, it, it decreases, so there's always a need for a replacement revenue for that. And the fact that, you know, every single major state with a major severance tax that's predominantly on severance tax has huge budget holes to fill this year because of the drop of the market. Um, is this going to be once again dedicated, well, I guess it wasn't ever really dedicated, but is it going to be dedicated to education funding where if you have another shortfall, it'll end up not no, it will become education. part of the revenues to the general fund so and will contribute to, right general into the general fund. fund. Yes. Okay. And does the governor's severance tax proposal seek to exclude leaseholders from paying their proportionate share of the tax? You know? I believe the proposal. Um, will say that uh, that the tax should not be passed through in the form of reduced royalties. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs>